Back in the day, the Greek philosopher Thales was polishing a chunk of fossilized tree sap, which we call amber. Jurassic Park reference. Great. Afterwards, he noticed that the amber began to attract small objects and dust. We know today that Thales was actually rubbing electrons off of his cloth and on to the amber. And guess what the Greek word for amber is? What? Electron. If I had a mic, I'd drop it. Uh, oh. There you uh, go. Thank you. You're Ma'am. welcome. The term static refers to something not moving, like static cling. What? What are you? What are you doing? It's stuck on the sock, stuck in the dryer. Static cling, get it? That's what static electricity is. It's electricity that's not moving. Don't you like my sock impression? So how does static electricity occur? First, we have to talk about electric charge. Electric charge is a property of all matter. Electrons are negatively charged particles, and protons are positively charged particles. Now, this charge can exert a push or a pull called the electric Now, this charge can exert a push or a pull, which we call the electric force. Protons push out, and electrons pull in. That means that like charges repel, and opposite charges attract. The area around one of these particles where the electric force can be detected is called the electric field. We say that a proton has a positive charge, plus one, and an electron has a negative charge, or minus one. Protons are what defines an element, so atoms don't typically lose protons, but they can lose or gain electrons easily. When an atom loses or gains electrons, the atom is called an ion. But remember, the electrons aren't really lost, like, oh, where did I go? They just move from one area to another. The total charge stays the same. This is called the conservation of charge. Now, static electricity can occur when we gradually build up these charges on an object. This results in the objects receiving the electrons becoming negatively charged. The material that loses the electrons has more protons than electrons now, so it has a positive charge. Besides being on fleek, my hair is full of electrons, and I can take them off using this. Blue. I would like to see that. Why don't we have our guest demonstrate this activity? Great. Why can't you just do it? Uh, no more questions. Charges can be transferred from one object to another by one of three ways. From contact, friction, or induction. With friction, we can rub electrons on to a surface. The balloon now has tons of electrons all over, which I took from her hair. Look how her hair stands up and all the strands are far apart. They're all positively charged. Light charges repel each other, so they stick out away from each other. But the top portion is sticking to the balloon because opposite charges attract. Electrons can also be transferred by contact. This machine is called a Van de Graaff generator. There's a rubber belt inside here which rubs electrons onto this metal sphere. If someone, AKA Mrs. Russomano, puts their hands on here when turned on, electrons can travel directly onto their body. Billions of electrons are traveling through Mrs. Russomano's arms and even reaching the tips of her hair, not mine. Look at all her hair sticking up and apart. They're all negatively charged, so they repel each other. How do you feel, Sam? Weird. Now, charges can also be induced without directly touching. Mrs. Russomano is now supercharged by the Van de Graaff generator, and perhaps a little mad at me. But it's okay, I'm doing science. If Mrs. Russomano puts her finger out to touch me, she could, in theory, transfer all of her electrons onto me without directly touching, becoming neutral again. This is called induction. So I get to zap you with the electricity from my hand. Theoretically. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Mrs. Russomano just discharged about 20,000 volts of electricity into my body. Now, 20,000 volts is a lot, but remember, it's not just the voltage involved with electricity. The flow of electrons or current for an electric shock like this was somewhere in the range of 10 to 20 milliamps or 0.1 to 0.02 amps. 
enough to feel it, but that's it, not to hurt you. You can get similar results if you rubbed your feet on the carpet with socks and then touched the metal doorknob, for example. A more dramatic example of induction would be something like this. Do you see the little electric arcs? Electrons are being discharged without touching, creating mini lightning bolts. Actually, this is how lightning is formed. Friction between the clouds and the ground result in the buildup of charges and eventually a dramatic electrical discharge. This happens in between clouds and between the clouds and the ground. So can charges ever act on uncharged objects? Actually, yes. Induction can happen even on an uncharged object. If I rub this balloon with cloth, the electrons from the cloth get transferred to the balloon. And when the balloon is placed near this wall, the electrons in the wall kind of move out of the way, temporarily. We can also see this happen with our own eyes. The negative charges on this balloon can cause the water molecules in this stream to temporarily align their nuclei with the balloon, making it attract and bend towards the water. Remember, Negative electrons on this balloon are making the electrons in the water move away, forcing the positive nucleus to bend towards it. When the balloon leaves, the water molecules revert back to their normal position. Whoa, that's like shocking. Uh, yeah, sure. Thank you. See you next time. Here you go. Oh, 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 oh. oh.